In this edition of Vinyl Hall, I've got nine metal records to talk about, including one fairly big album that I finally got a copy of after months of waiting. We'll talk about that one as well, so stick around. First up is a demo compilation for American death thrash band Master. This is the Witch Hunt demo recordings released in 2020 by Metal Bastard Enterprises. Great name. Anyways, uh, four demo tracks total. Uh, the two tracks on the B side are purportedly exclusive to this record. Uh, they might be out there elsewhere, but as far as I know, they're here only. Uh, the A side tracks, however, were originally released on a 2019 7 inch single by Afterworld Records. I think it was kind of limited edition, um, but it's nice to have them here with the other two demo tracks. Vinyl variant for this one is white. Great custom labels with the artwork from the cover. Do you have some favorites? Of course. I definitely dig The God of Thunder, which is not a Kiss song, and Another Suicide. Great track as well. So this record was actually a blind buy at the Target website of all places. I didn't know Target sold death metal. Uh, I'd found that out by going to their site. Uh, if you're looking for death metal, it might be there for you. I don't know. I saw Morbid Angel there as well. Pretty interesting. But anyways, definitely a blind buy. Um, I remember Master from way back in the 90s. Um, their album on the seventh day, God Created Master. Decent little record for its time, especially. So based on that, I bought this. This is okay. Um, this is really a snapshot of this band from 2013, uh, nine years ago from when I'm recording this. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, Paul Speckman, of course, is the head of Master. Uh, he's had a revolving door of musicians with him over the years, doing albums for Master. So if you're interested in the band, at this period of time, you should check it out. Uh, if you're just curious about Master or you collect death metal demos, maybe this will be for you as well, but I don't know. It's okay. Next is the debut album for American doom metal band New Praptor. This is the Hazariarch, released in 2017 by Shadow Kingdom Records. So for those unfamiliar with this band, New Praptor is a one-man band, such being Matt St. Hours out of Baltimore. Uh, the name of the band comes out of a video game called Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. I'm not much of a gamer. Maybe you are, and you know the reference, but it's kind of irrelevant to me. But anyways, that's where it's from. So once you get past the insanely repetitive instrumental on this one, such being Black Mass, some really great guitar work going on here, some wailing guitars that sound a little bit like early Paradise Lost. Uh, vocals are okay. They're... They're serviceable at best. Production is pretty lightweight. Uh, it doesn't affect the tracks much, but there's that. Also, there's some occasional trad metal moments here, especially in the more up-tempo numbers, and very much so in the solos. Also getting some hints of the band Trouble in this band, uh, particularly in the lyrical content. Also a little bit of the music, but definitely not the vocals. Um, again, this guy's passable, but not particularly great. And he certainly doesn't hold a candle to Eric Wagner. Amazing vocalist, by the way. Rest in peace, Eric Wagner. And speaking of lyrical content, they do skitter into the Christian quite a bit. I'm um, going so far as to recite the Lord's Prayer in the final track on this one. Uh, what is it called? The Fall of Christ. I'm not really phased by that all that much. If you are, maybe you want to steer clear of this, but again, it's like any other mythology to me. I listen to it. I'm okay with it. I dig the music more, so that's what I'm here for. Vinyl variant for this one is Classic Black. Uh, there was also a variant in black with yellow, orange, and red splatter, limited to 200 copies. If you're looking for something besides black, there you go. Uh, also has an insert, picture of Mr. St. Hour here, as well as some credits and full lyrics. And favorites on this one, definitely Burning the Believers, also Before the Eyes of God, and the track Wasting Away. Wasting Away is definitely my favorite, the utterly bangable riff in that track. I would definitely recommend that one to you first. So the tracks do plod along a little bit, occasionally broken up by some more up-tempo moments. I think that's what makes some of these tracks a little bit better. I'm glad those moments happen. Also, Mr. St. Hours should definitely get a better vocalist. I think that would bring more punch to the proceedings. I think that would elevate this material considerably more. Other than that, though, I am enjoying this. I'm curious to see where this goes. 
Next is the first full-length album from American metal band Night Demon. This is Curse of the Damned, released in 2015 by Steamhammer Records. So first of all, I have to say it, I'm really glad to finally have this record. I've been looking for it for a while. I've been trying to find a more OG pressing of it, so I've been holding out a bit. I did buy their EP originally. Now I have this, and a lot of people have been talking about this album in the YouTube metal community, especially over the last few years. Not the least of which is Andy over at the Cloudy Milder channel. By the way, thank you, Andy, for turning me on to Night Demon. I love this band. So Night Demon is definitely a revival band of sorts. They are tapping into the new wave of British heavy metal thing. Uh, bands such as Angel Witch and Diamond Head definitely come to mind. They do also incorporate a bit of speed into the proceedings, and they aren't just a copycat band. They really do have their own flavor as well. There is a little bit of maiden worship going on, I would say, in the gallop riffing, but also in the overtracked leads. And I say overtracked because there is one guitar player on this album, and he is occasionally doing twin leads. So he's overtracking a second guitar. Uh, a lot of energy and melody and punch going on in this record, especially in the catchy riffs. Very catchy riffs. Also, we got a gatefold here, uh, full lyrics, and of course, tracks on the back. A vinyl variant for this one is Classic Black. Again, this is the Steam Hammer pressing. There are two color variants if you get it through Century Media. There's an orange version as well as a sky blue version. However, those versions don't come with the CD. Only the Steam Hammer one does, at least to the best of my knowledge. So if you're looking for the disc, you got to go the Steam Hammer route. Also comes with a printed inner sleeve. You got some credits here, as well as some very cool artwork here. The artwork itself is from a graphic novel called Blood Sacrifice, which this album is inspired by. Um, I haven't seen the comic book other than this art. I'm kind of interested in checking it out. I love horror comics, and Night Demon's a cool band that sings some cool stuff about horror occasionally, so definitely want to check into this. As for favorites on this one, definitely Screams in the Night, the opening track is pretty great. Also, Curse of the Damned. Full Speed Ahead is a great track, but Heavy Metal Heat is probably my very favorite. You should definitely check out Heavy Metal Heat. Speaking of, there is a music video for that track, as well as another one for Screams in the Night. If you want to check out the video for Heavy Metal Heat, it is at SPV's YouTube channel, and Screams in the Night is at Century Media's YouTube channel, since Century Media does distribute this album. So, check both of those out. Pretty cool. So aside from a few singles in 2020, we really haven't seen an official studio LP from this band since 2017. I know there is a new album coming out. It's a compilation album called Year of the Demon. I did pre-order it, so we will talk about it later, but that's a comp, and I'd rather see a studio LP from this band because I'm really into them now, and I really want to dig into their catalog. So there it is. Next up is the third studio album from Danish epic doom metal band Altar of Oblivion. This is The Seven Spirits, released in 2019 by Shadow Kingdom Records. So this new album marks seven years since their last full-length release. And from what I gather from digging around about this band, they have added a bit more of an 80s trad metal thing into their core epic doom sound, which is pretty interesting. I like that. Uh, definitely crunching riffs and pounding drums here. Also some occasional acoustic parts and some wailing leads. There's also some Iomi worship going on here, but after that, they pretty much have a sound that's their own. Definitely digging it. Vocals are pretty decent on this album. They kind of range between soaring classic metal style and traditional doom. Also, I should mention the production of this album. It's pretty decent. It adds to the bigness of the album. I think if you're going to do epic music on any level, you should have a production to match, and The Seven Spirits definitely has that bigness to it. Also, Gatefold, it has a full explanation of what inspired the Seven Spirits album. It is a semi-concept album. The whole story is pretty much here. Uh, definitely check this out. The guitar player of the band writes this whole thing, so it's pretty interesting. The vinyl variant for this one is Orange Crush with Blood Red Smoke. Very nice. It's limited to 400 copies, by the way. Also comes with an insert with lyrics... And some pictures and woodcuts. The woodcuts look like Albrecht Durer. But don't quote me on that. Um, pictures of the band, some credits down there as well. Favorites on this one, Gathering at the Wake. Pretty amazing song. Also The Seven Spirits and Language of the Dead. There are no music videos off this album, though there is a lyric video for The Seven Spirits and there is an audio track for Language of the Dead. Both of those can be found at the Shadow Kingdom Records YouTube channel. 
check them out. So thanks go out to Lazarus here on YouTube for turning me on to Altar of Oblivion. I know they have an EP before this. I'm probably going to check into it. But if you have a suggestion as to which Altar of Oblivion album I should check out next, let me know in the comments below. Next up is the debut album from somewhat Brazilian, but definitely all-female death metal band Crypta. This is Echoes of the Soul, released in 2021 by Napalm Records. So... I gotta admit, initially I dragged my feet a bit on getting this album. I don't know why. I like Nervosa quite a bit. We're gonna talk about Nervosa because they have a connection to Crypta, obviously. But it really was this performance. I said it was a live in studio performance on YouTube. I think it was for a Brazilian uh, YouTube channel. It might be a TV station associated with the channel. I'm not really sure. Very professional looking though. And I saw them perform on that, this live in studio thing. And I'm like, they're amazing, you know? So. That one performance on YouTube sold me on buying this record. Very cool. So as some of you know, Crypto was formed by two ex-members of Nervosa. Here's where we bring that band in. Uh, Fernanda and Luana here. Uh, they are definitely more death metal leaning than the death thrash of Nervosa. I should point that out right away. Um, Definitely, I like Nervosa quite a bit. I did put them in my top 10 metal albums of 2021 video. You should go watch that after this. So, definitely curious about Crypto. I, one kind of leads to the other in a lot of ways, especially nowadays. So, here it is. We're going to talk about it. Of course, we should also mention Sonia Anubis right here. She's a guitar player. She was formerly in Burning Witches. Um, if you liked her guitar work there, especially maybe the solos, and imagine her playing a little heavier and a little darker, Definitely check out this record. She really is a gem on this thing. Amazing guitar player. Vinyl variant for this one is Classic Black. Custom labels on both sides. Also some favorites. Definitely have a few on this one. I love the track Possessed. Also Under the Black Wings, Bloodstained Heritage, and From the Ashes. Out of all of these though, Under the Black Wings is my very favorite. I recommend that track first and foremost. As for videos, there is one for From the Ashes. There's also a lyric video for the track Starvation. Both of those can be found at the official Napalm Records YouTube channel. So at the risk of driving this whole Nervosa Crypta comparison into the ground, I do want to mention one more time that this is Death Thrash. Again, it leans more death than thrash, but there's also some blackened vocals by Fernanda. And also Sonya's guitar work adds a bit of the melodic to the mix, a bit more melodic than Nervosa. But not complaining either way. I love both bands at this point. So, yeah, check them both out. I did want to mention the other band that Sonya is in, such being Cobra Spell. Cobra Spell is a hard rock outfit, very catchy riffs. She gets even more melodic there. Uh, they have a couple EPs out. I'm definitely going to be buying one of those and also waiting the full-length album when it comes out. So, Cobra Spell. You should check them out, too. As for this record, gotta say, after repeated spins, I am sold on it great record. You should check it out too. Next is a debut album from Finnish trad metal band Satan's Fall. This is Final Day, released in 2020 by High Roller Records. So the band is occasionally speed metal, but mixed with some trad metal moments. Uh, think Armored Saint and maybe Malice, which is kind of funny considering the band name is Satan's Fall. You expect something a bit different. Also, no Merciful Fate influence. You might think that by the... Uh, title of the band again. Uh, the album cover, at least the lower half of it, does give you an idea what to expect. If you hide the evil eyes and just look at this part, you're thinking, yeah, this is going to be a little more trad metal. So some of the speedier tracks remind me of early Halloween. Also, I'm getting a little bit of early running wild in the mix as well. Definitely uh, a strong strain of European power metal from that era specifically, as well as the American variant. Also seeing some nods to the new wave of British heavy metal. Also, the solos are pretty impressive, for sure. The vinyl variant for this one is white, limited to 200 copies. And the white variant is the first pressing of this album, in case that's a little important to you. I know some of you do check into that stuff on occasion. Also, we've got an insert, pictures of the band, lyrics, more lyrics, and credits. In case you want a really big picture of the band, there is also a gatefold with them right there. As for favorites, definitely Juggernaut is a great track. Uh, there Will Be Blood and Forever Blind. 
There is a video for Juggernaut. It is at the official Satan's Fall YouTube channel. So check that out when you've got a chance. So I was initially going to buy this album from Bandcamp, but then I noticed that the price of it, along with shipping, was over 50 bucks. So I dragged my feet on it. Then Hell's Headbangers picked it up, marked it down to $17, and I was like, sold. So pretty cool album. Uh, it's a little too catchy to be dark, despite the album title, and the lyrics can get a little bit dark. But very, very catchy, really loving this record, and probably looking forward to seeing what they do next. In fact, I know I am. Next is a compilation of live tracks from hard rock and heavy metal bands. This is Live and Heavy, released in 1981 by NEMS. So right away, one thing I really love about this comp is it's a comp of live tracks. Usually when you get comps, it's all studio tracks from different bands. but Or you get a live album from one band. But you get a nice sampling of all of these bands in one place. I will list the bands off right away. Deep Purple, Nazareth. Motorhead, Def Leppard, Rainbow, Status Quo, White Snake, UFO, Gillen, and Black Sabbath. Uh, the original version of this came with a printed inner sleeve. I didn't get that one, but I saw scans of it online. It's basically pictures of the bands and some more details of the shows. And they're all different shows, by the way. It's not a festival or anything like that. So there it is. Vinyl variant for this one, of course, since it's 1981, is Classic Black with the NEMS logo. You're probably used to seeing that as a Black Sabbath fan, uh, much of their 70s output, as well as that live album of questionable uh, permission <laughs> is out there. Uh, pretty cool. Also, I should talk about the cover here. There are two variants of this cover. Um, there's another one with a different font and different colors. I don't know why, but that's there. Uh, as for favorites, I definitely love Motorhead with White Line Fever, Def Leppard with Rocks Off, also, White Snake with Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City. Great song, great performance. And UFO with Lights Out. Uh, they call it Lights Out in London. It's clearly Lights Out. Uh, a couple complaints, though. One is that I could do without Nazareth or Status Quo on this thing. Maybe I would have put Judas Priest and ACDC in instead. It is 1981. If you're going to be a little more current, I think those two bands would have played better. Also, I don't know, Rainbow with Graham Bonnet. Yeah, I'd rather prefer Ronnie James Dio there. He's the better vocalist. I don't know. I don't like Graham Bonnet for the most part. Maybe you do. Maybe you prefer that. I don't know. But yeah. And the version of Paranoid by Black Sabbath is okay. It's Paranoid. It's a song that's done to death. So I'm not incredibly excited about it, but it's okay. And they didn't do Dio there, which is kind of interesting. They did Ozzy. But I get it. Everyone loves Ozzy. Of course, I had to buy this. I mean, look at this damn cover. It screams by me. Uh, great selection of live tracks, uh, mostly live versions I'd never heard before, which makes a live comp even more awesome. So I'm definitely glad I got this, no question. Next is the latest live album from British heavy rock band Motorhead. This is The Lost Tapes, Volume 1, released in 2021 by BMG. So this came out as a Record Store Day exclusive on Black Friday of 2021. Should show you the gatefold as well. Pretty cool stuff here. Uh, a friend of mine picked this up for me. I couldn't make it to Record Store Day on Black Friday. I had to work like a lot of other human beings do. He was first in line, which is pretty cool. He, so he did pick up this copy for me. And it took forever for our schedules to sync up, which is why I'm talking about this album in February instead of November of last year. So there it is. So my only complaint about this, and it's really minor, is that the guitar mix is a bit muddy, but it's Motorhead, who expects pristine sound quality from Motorhead. Uh, so it, it sounds like a really good bootleg. Uh, not quite commercial live album level, but definitely really good bootleg. I mean, it's called The Lost Tapes. What do you expect? It is very listenable, though. It's pretty good. So track selection from this is pretty decent. Uh, four songs from Sacrifice. That's obviously the tour this is coming from. Also, a lot of classics and a lot of stuff from the rest of the 90s is in here, too. It's nice to hear some of that stuff because a lot of that material isn't on a lot of the other Motorhead Live recordings. So it's one of the sell points of this record. Um, also, uh, Lemmy sings during his isolated bass solo. He does this weird impromptu singing thing. I'll put singing in quotes. Uh, classic Lemmy. It's like, why are you singing over your bass solo? 
because he's Lemmy is really the answer. Also, the uh, in-between song banter. Uh, Lemmy is a comedian in between songs. If you've ever heard any live Motorhead, you know that. He's hilarious. He's also rather politically incorrect. He does a lot of fake Spanish, which is just hilarious. Love it. Vinyl variant for this one is 2LP Transparent Red. Very nice red. Also favorites, of course... Of course. Ace of Spades opens the show. Great. Uh, also, Orgasmatron is pretty amazing. Uh, the version of Going to Brazil is pretty cool. And they end with Iron Fist and Overkill. Very, very favorite tracks of mine. The version of Kill by Death is okay. There's some other classics on here. I see Stay Clean. I see Metropolis. No bomber, but, you know, what can you do? Uh, there are no music videos, per se, for this album, but virtually every song, if not every song, an audio version of it is at the Motorhead official YouTube channel. So you can hear the whole thing there if you want. But you know what? Buy the record, too. Support your artists. So this album was previously only available as a digital form. It was uh, released in May of 2021 in that format. Uh, this is obviously the Record Store Day vinyl release of it, first time on vinyl. Uh, there is a volume two that's digitally available, and I am predicting right now that in April of 2022, Record Store Day will put out a vinyl version of that as well. I'm calling it now because I really think it's going to happen. And the list isn't out yet, so I can't cheat. But yeah, I'm calling this one. So overall, a decent live album with quite a bit of material I don't have in my collection at all as far as live versions of tracks. So yeah, we're going to hang on to this one. And hey, look what finally decided to show up. It's the 11th studio album from American Thrash Legends Exodus. This is Persona Non Grata, released in 2021 by Nuclear Blast Records. Yeah. So as many of you know, this album did make my top 10 metal albums of 2021 list, except that I had a graphic in place of this physical record because shipping delays. But you might be wondering, after a few more months of me having this album and listening to it digitally, of course, if it still measures up, if it's still good, bad, whatever. And I can tell you that my position on this album has not changed one damn bit. It is still a killer record. So first off, yes, I still dig Zetro's vocals on this one. I know that's a bit of a controversy these days on this record. Some people don't like that he's experimenting a little bit. I happen to dig it quite a bit. He does his classic voice, of course. He also does some leanings into hardcore, and he does some death growls. And I think in each case, it really does serve the respective song. So no problems there. And also, the vocal variety on this record really does add some distinction to the tracks, which we all know... In thrash metal, that's a good thing. Vinyl variant for this one is Red and Mustard Swirl with Black Splatter, limited to 3,500 copies, which means it's everywhere. There you go. Also comes with an insert here, full lyrics there, as well as pictures of the band and some credits. In case you want to see that artwork again, there it is pretty great. Speaking of artwork, there's also a pretty killer gatefold here, which you should also take a gander at. Very cool. So you should probably know that there are over 10 vinyl variants for Persona Non Grata, which is quite the collection. Uh, of course, it's Nuclear Blast. They do tons of different vinyl variants. It's a thing they do. Also, there is a box set for this title. Uh, it comes with red with black splatter vinyl, plus some other goodies, so you should definitely check into that. As for favorites, I definitely have quite a few. Um, they haven't changed much since I first covered this record on my Top 10 video. Um, I still love The Fires of Division quite a bit, and Prescribing Horror is still my favorite song on here. But now I'm kind of liking The Beatings Will Continue Until Morale Improves. Love that title. Uh, it definitely grew on me quite a bit more as I heard this record, so pretty excited about that. Speaking of The Beatings Will Continue... Until Morale Improves, that is the music video off this album. There are also lyric videos for Prescribing Horror, The Years of Death and Dying, and Clickbait. Check those all out at the official Nuclear Blast YouTube channel. Also, we want to talk about The Years of Death and Dying a little bit more. Uh, we're getting some cleaner, if not slightly cleaner, vocals from Zetro on that one. Uh, the chorus has a bit of an accept vibe to it, which is kind of interesting. Um, again, I like the fact that Exodus is stretching their wings maybe those wings, 
and uh, doing other stuff, you know, experimenting a bit. And I think it really works on this album. I don't understand the criticism, except for the people who want bands to remain exactly the same for every single album and never change. It's 2022, kids. Bands are going to change a little. It's what they do. So as regular viewers of mine know, this album originally came out in November of 2021, but it took me until late January of 2022 to get it. And that does bring up a point, uh, a, a brief complaint, and it's specific to Nuclear Blast. I don't hold the band responsible for this. They have nothing to do with it. And I know supply chain issues factor into this as well, but I'm still going to gripe about it. And that's that people who pre-order these albums like i did should be priority over the brick and mortar stores it's ridiculous to go into stores and see all these copies of persona non grata and i'm still waiting for my pre-order that i ordered many months ago it's crazy so nuclear blast you need to prioritize the pre-order people first they're the people who are bankrolling a bit of the album right away you know so yeah think about it so complaints aside, I'm really glad to finally have this album because it is a banger start to finish. Absolutely recommended. And that's it for another episode of Vinyl Hall. Of course, this is the moment where you let me know what you think about each and every one of these albums. I know, we're metal fans, we've got opinions for days. So definitely let me know. Maybe you like these, maybe you dislike them. Also, maybe you have some music recommendations for me. Maybe I mention a band or an album and that reminds you of another band or another album. You know what you gotta do? Leave it in the comments because it super helps me out and awesome. Of course, this might also be your very first time here at my channel and you're going, hey, who's he? My name's Matt. This is the Accusation Network. Each and every week, I do metal vinyl collecting videos. I also talk about modern and classic metal in general. Definitely check out my playlist. I've got over a dozen shows on these subjects. Also, you know what? If you like this particular video, give it one of these. Also, subscribe to the channel and share the video with some friends. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.